On the night of February 19th this year 2018, at about 11 p.m., a patient was wheeled into the trauma surgery theater, okay? And uh, a brain uh, neurosurgeons performed uh, uh, surgery yeah, on his skull to surgically remove some kind of swelling, okay? Now, that should have been a normal, ordinary procedure at the Kenyatta National Hospital, the largest referral hospital in Eastern Central Africa. But as it turned out, they operated on the wrong patient. Now, the latest is that uh, the poor patient who missed out on that operation, yeah, because it was very urgently required by that patient, yeah, passed on yesterday. Very sad. It is said the patient hailed from somewhere in Transoia. Now, to the utter shock of many Kenyans, what should have been purely an incident at Kenyatta National Hospital concerning the health ministry, concerning uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, has been turned political. Very sad. And so let's dig a little deeper into this, yeah, and find out exactly what's going on here. And what has caused Rift Valley legislators, led by Kiricho Senator Aaron Cheriot, to come out with both barrels of their guns firing, yeah? They're actually demanding for the immediate reinstatement of uh, Lily Koros, uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital uh, Chief Executive Officer. For those who are not aware, she was actually sent on compulsory relief as a result of this very unfortunate incident. The excuse to allow investigations to be carried out exactly how this thing happened. But let us start from the beginning. Now, I need to tell you that I'm very familiar with the Kenyatta National Hospital for very many years. And the reason is simple, okay? Uh, my political lecturer's wife was a senior medical personnel at the hospital for many years. Indeed, it is a hospital where the life of my political lecturer was saved. Yeah, maybe I need to tell you that story. <laughs> Quite a story. Now, for those familiar with this channel, you're well aware of the fact that uh, my political lecturer <laughs> was a very senior police officer and he made many enemies during the time he was in the police. He played everything by the book, yeah, could not take bribes, could not do anything, yeah, against his oath of office. And so he had no qualms, yeah, impounding illegal goods, yeah even when they belonged to a very senior person in state house, yeah? So naturally made enemies. And so one day, he would always uh, like to take his uh, tea in the office. So one day he took his tea in the office as usual, at about four, yeah? And then when he got home, and as usual changed from his uniform into uh, civilian uh, clothes to go for his usual drink at his uh, usual drinking joint. But on that particular day, he left the compound, then a few minutes later, the car was seen driving back in very fast. He hit the brakes and then collapsed on the steering wheel. To cut a long story short, he was rushed to Kenyatta National Hospital, which was the nearest hospital uh, from where this incident happened. Indeed, it was less than one minute away, okay? And there, a very, an emergency procedure was performed. Okay, of course, it really helped that uh, his wife was uh, in the medical profession, yeah, because a lot of things were able to get done a lot faster, like knowing exactly what the problem could be, because she was able to examine him on the spot seconds after this incident happened, and, uh, you know, from the telltale signs, she could Im immediately tell that it was some sort of poisoning. And, of course, after that, he never took tea in the office again until he retired or rather was forced to retire <laughs> from the police force. But that's a story for another day. Indeed, I consider myself very fortunate, yeah, because both my parents did something that could stand the test of time. Years later, years in fact, uh, over a decade later, two decades later, yeah, uh, I ended up at Kenyatta National Hospital, not sick, of course, uh, on a visit on uh, journalistic duties. And a complete stranger to me recognized my second name. And they asked the question, are you related to so-and-so, the late so-and-so? And then you know the usual, oh, she was one of our best. Patients still ask for her, etc., etc. So really, 
<laughs> as Chris Kumekucha, I have absolutely no choice but to do things that will stand the test of time. My sincere apologies for digressing. Back to our issue. Now that I've proved to you that I may know one or two things about the inside workings of the Kenyatta National Hospital that uh, may not be known by many, okay, I need to tell you the following. Now, I've heard people say, oh, you know, Kenyatta National Hospital is very incompetent. We have always known they're very incompetent. It's a mess there, blah, blah, blah. They don't know what they're doing. But I need to tell you this. There is no way you can mix up a patient, yeah, and uh, they end up uh, <laughs> in the neurosurgeon, under a neurosurgeon's knife, yeah, to be operated on the skull, yeah. There's no way a mix-up like that can happen. Unless, wait for this one, unless it has been deliberately organized. And that is a fact. Now, after the commercial break, I'll explain further exactly why what I'm saying is the absolute truth. See you in a bit. There is one very nagging question we need to ask ourselves. How does a billionaire, entrepreneur, entrepreneur like Jimmy Wanjike, yeah, suddenly turn into a freedom fighter? What has transformed this man from a wheeler dealer to one of the most visible freedom fighters for a better Kenya today? What is it? Actually, there's a mystery. Yeah, things don't happen by accident. There's an explanation. There are details, very sensitive details, which explain everything very neatly so that you understand Jimmy Wanjige better, so that you understand Jimmy Wanjige, the freedom fighter, better. And what his motivation really is, what has turned him from what he was to what he is today. Now, all that information is in my latest Club 1999 recording. Become a member of Club 1999 now. Yeah, the cost is on your screen right now. All you need to do is to send an email, a blank email, to the email address you also see on your screens right now, and you'll be a member within no time because that email will give you an automated response that will give you payment instructions of what you need to do. Now, this is one recording you really have to catch so that you understand what is unfolding before our very eyes, including the latest very dramatic incident involving Bwana Wanjiki. Welcome back. Now, quick quiz for you. Where in Kenya do you think you'll find the most experienced doctors, the most competent doctors, the most experienced nurses, the most competent nurses in East and Central Africa? Where? Nairobi Hospital? Nope. Actually, it's at the Kenyatta National Hospital. Kenyatta National Hospital is huge. Yeah. I mean, you can get a patient being wheeled uh, for an operation. Yeah. And they would have to <laughs> they would have to travel for 5 minutes or more <laughs> to get where they're going and they've not left the hospital. It's huge. The hospital deals with cases not only from Kenya but from all over the region, East and Central Africa. Of course, there's another very rotten part of Kenyatta National Hospital, which I'm going to look into in a, few, in a bit, yeah, in great detail. But as far as the medical staff are concerned, mm -mm. thumbs up, yeah, top of the cream, the best you can find anywhere. And that is a fact. Now, we all know doctors write down everything, everything, yeah, what they have done, what they have not done, what they suspect, what they do not suspect, etc. It's all written down in the chart of the patient. And each patient has a very specific reference number. Okay? And so the issue of uh, mixing up patients <laughs> is a very, very long shot. Very long shot. Almost an impossibility. Okay? Now let us assume that you want to challenge me on uh, my statement about the competence of uh, the medical staff at Kenyatta National Hospital. Okay? Let's assume that you want to challenge me on that. And let's assume that all these guys are idiots. They do not know what they're doing. Okay? Both the doctors and the nurses. Yeah? Humor me for a minute. Let's assume that. With the systems in place 
and the way things have always been done in the hospital for decades and decades, it is still virtually impossible to mix up patients. Yeah? Let's assume that everybody's an incompetent idiot. Yeah? It would still be very, very difficult to mix up patients. And so, the huge suspicion, I mean, the only logical thing which makes sense, is that this mix-up was deliberately engineered by somebody. But why would somebody do this? Why would, what would they have to gain by doing something so horrific that indeed has now resulted in the death of a human being, in the, in the death of a precious human life? Why? Okay, let's take a quick look at what has been happening at the hospital. Okay, I'm one of those people who do not believe in coincidences. Okay, but we all know that there have been recent very big controversies at the hospital. Okay, remember the case where mothers were being raped uh, and people were saying this was being done by mortuary staff? Remember that case? Now, I'm not going to make any excuses for rapists, but let us look at the bare facts. Let's, let us coldly analyze the facts so that we understand this a little better. Now, in a hospital the size of Kenyatta National Hospital, a lot of funny things are bound to happen. Yeah. Why? Because of the human factor. You know, where human beings are involved, especially in such large numbers, definitely there are a lot of very, very funny and indeed evil things that will take place. The rape of patients has been taking uh, place for years, indeed decades, okay? Disappearance of babies, stealing of babies, oh, that has been happening for decades. And all manner of evils you can think of, okay? Now, what should happen ideally in this case is that the hospital staff need to, what ordinarily they would have done, is to ensure that they limit these evils, yeah? Just like in a huge country called Kenya, yeah? The fact that people are murdered every day, the fact that uh, rape goes on in the country every day, Babies are stolen all over every, uh, the country every day, yeah? Uh, can you blame it all on the government? Yes and no. Yes, they should uh, do everything in their power to ensure that they limit these crimes, keep these crimes low, and so on and so forth. No, because they cannot control human beings, yeah? Kenya is not heaven. Kenya is on earth, yeah? And on earth we have human beings, and human beings are evil extremely evil but now in the case of uh, Kenyatta National Hospital all of a sudden this scandal about patients being raped suddenly appears in the media okay is suddenly brought to the forefront is suddenly made public to a horrified uh, <laughs> a lot of Kenyans okay now as evil as that is yeah and as bad as that is and as much as my heart goes out to all those people who are victims, because as I've said here before, rape is a horrible, horrible crime. Yeah? The truth of the matter, the cold facts, are why now? Okay? This is something that has been going on for decades. Why now? Why has it been brought to the limelight now? The simple answer is that thing was engineered. Okay? The bringing this thing into the limelight, revealing it to the public, the expose, was actually engineered. Now, when all this bad news about Kenyatta Hospital did not, they seemed not to work yeah, in achieving the objectives of those behind this, they took their game a notch higher, yeah, and they chose a very, very serious procedure. Yeah? I mean, uh, neurosurgery <laughs> is very serious, yeah? and hence this mix-up incident that is now making the news. Now, let me give you some very concrete evidence yeah, to prove that what I'm telling you is absolutely true. Now, when the uh, rape incident first broke, do you remember the reaction of the hospital? It shocked Kenyans. It appalled Kenyans, in fact. The hospital staff, you know, the top-notch administration of the hospital denied it. Okay? They were very defensive, yeah, and Kenyans were disgusted. Okay? Now, let me just tell you what the hospital should have actually told Kenyans. But there's no way they, should have, they would have told Kenyans this, because <laughs> Kenyans would have just fainted. Yeah? But this is absolute truth. Actually, what the hospital was saying, Nayo Kizungu Mingi, 
was that uh, these things happen at the hospital all the time. And for you guys to think we can stop everything, yeah, just to in investigate this small incident, I mean, that's crazy. There are so many other very crazy things which happen in this hospital because it's a large organization, yeah, exactly what I've been explaining earlier on in the first part of this recording. It's a large hospital. So many things happen. Uh, the fact that this has been highlighted, there's an ulterior motive, yeah, because so many evil things happen in this hospital. We as an administration, we take our role very seriously and we put everything in place to try and limit these incidences. Yeah, that's what actually if the hospitals was, if the hospital um, top staff was speaking honestly, that is the answer they should have, they would have given Kenyans. But realistically, such an answer, giving such an answer, <laughs> people would have just walked in and lynched uh, the Kenyatta National Hospital staff. Okay, so what happened? The PR people called in. Yeah, to dress the truth accordingly. Yeah, to project the hotel. Uh, sorry, to project the hospital uh, with the right image they wanted. Yeah, and so what we got was the reaction we received from the hospital. What we got was what puzzled many Kenyans. But now you know the reality. Further evidence that uh, what I'm telling is true is the fact that uh, this medical issue has suddenly escalated and found its way into national politics, right at the top of national politics. Yeah, and that, again, that is not by accident. And I'm going to discuss that in great detail in the next episode of this series. Okay, see you there. You know the usual drill. Look out for the link on the top left-hand corner of your screen. Click on it and you should, be, you should be on to part two of this recording where I'm going to tell you some things <laughs> that will just shock you. See you there in a bit. This is Chris Kumekucha.